The Presbyterian Church of Ghana was established in 1828 by the Basel Mission Society. In 1926, the church was renamed the Presbyterian Church of Gold Coast. And in 1957, when Ghana gained independence, the church became the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. The church upholds the centrality of the Word of God. Godly leadership, democratic principles, and discipline, and ends quality education. Currently, the church can boast of 17 presbyteries and still counting, as part of the church's mandate to ensure consistent spiritual renewal in the country that presents Channel of Hope. Channel of Hope is educating, <laughs> informative. It is a long way, but Jesus will come to you and entertaining. Channel of Hope, showing this and every Sunday from 5.30 to 6 p.m. on GTV. Channel of Hope, life's getting better. The Presbyterian Church expresses their sincere appreciation and gratitude to members of Club 1000 who pledged and donated various sums of money in support of various projects that have been undertaken including the Channel of Hope. We also appeal to the current members of Club 1000 to continue to support us and make good to help in the testimony of Christ and the propagation of the Word of God. May God richly bless you. Located here. Yes, please. Come and sit. What's your name? I'm in Chua. All right. You can call me Mama G. The only mama on campus. I'm my final year student offering home economics. I hope you wouldn't mind becoming my school daughter. No, I wouldn't bother. Wonderful. You are irresistible. I want you to be my soupy. Please, what is soupy? Don't be naive. I want you to be my lover. I want us to be lovers. Okay, it's lunch time. So after lunch, we'll talk more on it since you'll be sleeping on top of my bed. At least more. Send for me, you may speak. Yeah, I sent for you. Intua, something is bothering my mind. What is going on between you and Mamaji? Hey, hold this day. Master of whatever you call yourself. Who gave you the audacity? I mean the right to question my do's and don'ts in this school. Have you ever spent a city on me? Nonsensical nonsense. Oh, I can see you've lost your sense of decency. Where is your pride as a woman in the making? It's very shameful and disgusting for a girl like you to fall in love with the same sex, cuddling and fondling each other to achieve your sexual desire. The Bible speaks against lesbianism and homosexuality. Enough of that fast. I think you are one of her lovers whom she jilted. Me? God forbid to practice that beastly act. Okay, I've told you my mind. Remember, the end time is near. I don't care a beef about it. After all, you have a boyfriend, don't you? Let this be your first and last. Nonsense. I've done my part. What? Adubia? What are you doing in my room? How did you manage to get in here? I just thank you, my love. And why are you behaving this way? We've been lovers for five years and I've never been. Hey, hey, please, 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 Adibia. It's it's just over between us, okay? It's over. Can't you see? It's just over. I'm getting married tomorrow. I see. After penetrating me with those pennies-like objects, 
destroying my will to the extent that I can't give birth when I marry. You want to marry me? Eh? Listen and listen very carefully to me. I'm giving you two options to choose from. Either you go to bed for the last time with me, or I'll tell Ajinfra and your pastor about our secret relationship. And listen, the last package comes with distributing our naked pictures at your wedding tomorrow. Decide for yourself. Choose between the options I've given you and you'll be fine. I'm begging you, Adibia. Mm -hmm. It's alright. It's okay. Let's do it for the last time. Then you leave me alone to marry. I hear you. Leave me alone to I marry. I hear you. So, like, you've, you've now raised me up. So, let's have fun. <laughs> oh. What? What am I saying? Oh my god! So, Michael. Pastor. What brought about this act? Hmm. Pastor. I was introduced into this game seven years ago by my primary school teacher. Mm. And, Pastor, he was lavishing me with gifts and money. And I thought it was a blessing because my parents are not financially sound. I see. They are not able to cater for me. I see. So, why did you come to confide in me? But the money came to our school to give a talk. Oh, about uh, lesbianism and homosexuality? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay. I, I realized that I can only be saved only by the power of God. That's it. Yeah. Secondly, I have multiples of gay partners in school and at home. First, recently, I went to the hospital and the doctor said I need to be operated on as a result of torn lining around my anus. Pastor, you can see I'm feeling well. It's okay. Pastor, what baffles me is that he said the operation will not cost not less than 3,500 CDs, Pastor. The wedding between Kesua and I tomorrow. That cancel is what? Yes, Pastor, I can't anymore, please. Pastor, please cancel it. I Why? can't anymore. Pastor, I can't anymore. Just cancel the wedding for us. Ajevra. Pastor. What's wrong, wrong with you? Pastor, please. I can't. I can't marry her. I'm sorry, Pastor. <laughs> Just cancel the wedding. Wedding tomorrow. Yes, Pastor, no. You're I, I'm telling me. That's why. What's going on? Pastor, please have mercy on me. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Tell me something. Gonna be lesbian. You are what? Yes, I'm a lesbian. A lesbian. All this why? My partner hmm. said to expose me if I don't do it. Take your time. Take your time and tell me what, what you want to say. Your partner said what? She decided to tell everybody if I don't do it there for the last time. Hey. Oh my God! Why is your to us in the house? When? Is it today? Pastor, that's what she said. Pastor, please, I'm oh. save my marriage. That's <laughs> what? I'm disappointed in you. Pastor, please cancel I'm the wedding. I'm disappointed in you. No, this thing should not continue. This wedding needs to be postponed. Pastor, Pastor please, 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 cancel it. I'm only here for you to cancel it. I can't. Please, I can't anymore. Please, no, no, no. Channel of Hope. Life's getting better. Hello and welcome to Channel of Hope. One of the most serious issues facing the church today is homosexuality. It looks like it is gradually becoming an alternative lifestyle, especially now that they are advocating for acceptance. Unfortunately, some people do not perceive this act as a problem. The Christian church, however, cannot stand idle because we know the spiritual and physical consequences. I'm sure we have been preaching compelling messages for people to desist from it, yet it is still ongoing. What can we do as Christians to curb this dangerous act? For more insights, please stick and stay with me as I discuss and unveil the physical and spiritual implication of homosexuality. Wait. 
Mrs. Joyce Dapa, a clinical psychologist, and Dr. Emmanuel Chemantin Amwa, a medical practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Channel of Hope. Thank you. Let me start with you, Auntie Joyce. What is homosexuality? Okay, when we talk of homosexuality, it means a man who is uh, sexually and uh, emotionally attracted to a man. It can also be a woman who is sexually or uh, emotionally attached to a woman. To a woman. So we can say that they are sex, same sex attraction. And then we have the other one, what we call the bisexual. Okay. The man is attracted to a woman and at the same time can also attra be attracted to a woman. So they both they have sex both for with a female and a male partners. Meaning somebody could be married and still have Exactly, yes. Wow. A man can have a wife with children and still engage in another uh, extramarital affairs with same sex. with same sex. Same sex, I see. Doc, before we go to the health implications, can you tell us some of the factors that lead people into such acts? These things have been with the human race for, I think you can remember even Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. And scientists have been really probing to find out why people would go into such uh, relationships or what to really push people to go into such um, uh, you know, partnerships, if I should put it that way. So part of the things that they, are post they have put forth is that they think that um, it's got to do with their genes, you know, as uh, Dr. Joyce has said. And so then one really has no choice over it, like you, that is your orientation. And they say that when you are in the womb, there are some hormones that may play a role in shaping you. And so when you come in, then you have a preference towards uh, the same, sex. same sex. Um, for those, but even that, you, you, the, the, there's no um, consensus or there's no agreement with the scientific community, 100% that that is. They've had cases where they have uh, people who were gay and they adopted children and they raised these children and these children were not okay, gay. Okay, okay. Um, so the, those that also talk for the environmental reasons or the upbringing that you can have, you can have twins born of the same parents. Mm -hmm. When they are raised under different conditions, they may come up differently. So even though some may argue that people have been born with particular traits, we know that the environment um, also can play a role. And the environment is exposure to certain things. Uh, that is, you can learn it. Um, so, you, you, you know, for those that said, well, I've been born with it, I cannot do anything about it. We know that that alone cannot be, you know, 100% accurate because the environment also plays a role. If someone perhaps had, has the, uh, the orientation or thinks he's been born with it, if he, if, he's not, if he does not have the supportive environment that would nurture that trait, it may not totally flourish. So there are, there are all kinds of uh, reasons. Some may do it for, for economic reasons. Yeah, I was going to ask what economic yeah, factors can... Yeah, economic reasons, because for the few people I've, I've listened into, a few young people, so for example, I, I listened into this um, guy who, very about 21 year old, who was, had now changed, was an SG here in Ghana, and was contributing into a radio program, I happened to listen in. And he, he had should I say, normal orientation or attracted to the opposite sex. But he found himself in this um, condition where he really needed money. According to him, he was hmm. actually stranded outside of this country and he was introduced to uh, a Ghanaian um, and he wanted to enter into a particular kind of industry but for, for confidentiality reasons, I, I cannot yeah, mention of course, it. Of and this man who was what to do said, oh, I can help you, but you know, this is the condition. And he told him, it was not, there's nothing wrong with this. I'll tell you a lot of people who do it. This person does it, this person does it. And if you do it, I'm going to give, buy your ticket for you. I'm going to take care of you. And it looked like a good deal for him. And so he got into it. And the first time, it was a bit painful and unpleasant. But subsequently, he didn't find anything wrong with it. And he was really into it. So in that part of the world, I should say, I think 
economic reasons might be one of the uh, issues that might push people into these um, um, behaviors. And for others, they want to belong to a particular class mm, and, mm. And, and to belong to a group. Because if you want to be part of this uh, core group and you realize that this is what members of the group does, then to get acceptance, you know, you would want to practice, I think it's like alcohol, like drugs, where if your friends are into it, you want to feel accepted and so you get into it. So I think these are some of the reasons why people uh, may go uh, into these kind of conditions. Looks like people are also enticed, especially when you watch the drama. So the final year students uh, telling the first year students with so yummy soupy and stuff like that. It looks like it's happening in our schools. Let's see, what do we do? Especially in our schools. Okay, in fact, if you look at the boys, a research has shown that by age 13, a boy you know, has the, the private parts has been somehow manipulated by an adult. Oh, yes. before the person yes. gets 13? 13. 13, yes. Meaning so it happened, happened yeah. Younger, at okay. younger ages. By you know, an adult? By an adult. Always is initiated by an adult. Uh -huh. And by 15 years, it's not only the organ that has been manipulated or played with. Uh, it has gone beyond that. Doing you using the anus for sex. You know, and it continues, you know, these activities, other uh, pleasurable activities that they do. So by 21 years, the person has come a long way. Mm. Uh -huh. Experienced so, already. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, so that is what, from, from what we watch, yeah. you see that this girl was a form one. Form one, he fresh student. Fresh students, yeah. He didn't know anything about yeah. it. And it is a senior who introduced, introduced yeah. her into it. You know, and... You know, I mentioned about age 13. At that age, because children are mostly leaving, moving from childhood to adult, a transition. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, there's what you call the law of formative effects. Whatever the child learns, the child grows with it. Okay. So by age 21, the person has already, the brain has already formed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if this child has been introduced to this act at that early age, it becomes part and parcel of the child. So that that is so mostly it is an adult who introduces the child into it. Doc, mm -hmm. health implications. On the health implications, there are several several health implications um, for uh, those who engage in homosexuality, and uh, I think the uh, both for the lesbians and for the male, the gays, you know, they all have real issues, and uh, if you talk about the gays. Then, because one is the male and one is the female, Same one way. gives and one receives, usually um, uh, both suffer consequences. Oh, really? Yes. I thought it's only the receiver. Both suffer consequences. Okay. Um, on the uh, implications are the, are the infections and the sexually transmitted infections. And these are by no means any you know, less issues. I mean, there are things that are happening. We are seeing it in the hospitals today severally all over uh, in the country and um, HIV is, is one of the okay. you know, most prevalent ones apart from the other ones like gonorrhea, syphilis and um, uh, sometimes what what are like fleshy growth that grows around the inner region you know and it can really come there plenty such that even uh, penetrating becomes uh, uh, difficult. So this happens to the receiver? This happens to the receiver. Okay. Um, it is very, very, it can be very painful. And uh, see, the, the nature of the inner region is not as robust, it's not as tough as, you know, the female passage. Oh, okay. Because the female passage can accommodate children, it can, it can accommodate, you know, baby's head, it can stretch, it can do all kinds of things. And then later, it may still retain a, an appreciable, a, you know, uh, size. But for the inner region, it has not been designed to for things to be introduced in, in that way. And so the, the flesh there is a bit softer. And so the least, you know, uh, uh, friction that goes there, there's a lot of uh, bruises and there's a lot of abrasion. And then the the ring around the inner region that 
let's say you are hard pressed to visit the, 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 the washroom, but you don't want to, you can hold it. There is something that, that can help you hold it till you get to a place where you want to yeah. really ease. And that's a sphincter. That is one of the things that is easily broken during this um, affair. And so when it's broken, then you cannot hold back anything in terms of uh, you know your, your fecal matter. And so you find most of them, as we saw in the in the yeah. video, you know, the young man was wearing pampers because you cannot hold anything there. And these lesions become infected and sometimes you have um, uh, pass, passes like uh, if you have a boil, the water that comes from it, you know, the yellowish uh, uh, water, all that mangled over there. Um, sometimes they have, um, sometimes in, in the course of the art, people, they insert their fingers, they can even insert their whole, their whole, whole forearm. I, excuse me, uh, which one are you talking about? Talking the about men the, or the, the women? The men. I'm the, talking about the men. The in, men. In the course of they the can art, insert their... They can insert their fingers, they can insert their arm. Um, yes, because it has the place has become opened. They can insert objects, you know, and all kinds of things. So really, the, the whole place becomes gaped. And that's why when you heard, he said that you need an operation. Yeah. They need an operation to stitch you up to make the place a, a, a bit tighter. Which is expensive. Which is very expensive. And in doing that, it really leads you on to other um, very bizarre orientations for example they have they are some to use their mouth to lick the the you know the inner the the anus of the of their partner and if there are, there's feces or their toilet can everything is licked when they 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 discharge their sperms also you know into the into the anus some will come out and then they they, they lick um you know these sperms and these sperms contains all kinds of uh, bacteria and viruses and, 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 and diseases. Whatever is in there, you get it. And um, in these days that we are all talking about Ebola, how to prevent ourselves from getting the, the Ebola, it is important to note that just as the HIV and other viruses, Ebola also lives in the sperms. So if the person is infected, you find it also in the sperms. And so if you are, you know, playing or licking or interacting with these sperms... And the then you are, infected, swallowing, you are swallowing Ebola. You, are putting yourself in so much risk of getting these uh, infections uh, like Ebola. They also suffer um, uh, certain intestinal problems that they call the gay bowel. It is certain diseases that they have identified among those who are, who are gay, that is okay. the men. Because of all these feces that they are playing with, eating feces, drinking urine and all that, they, they, they find themselves into, into all kinds of... Uh, some of the infections that they... Um, are prone to, with, you mentioned HIV, STIs, yeah. you also have a hepatitis B, okay. and hepatitis C that they can get uh, through this uh, interaction. And then also because usually the first experience is, it causes pain. And so with time, that those who begin to have what they call saddest tendencies, they, they are happy to see people suffer because they, they enjoy the pain you know, so this is the one who is uh, who is a male, and the female who is a man, but you know, female in yeah, the female relationship could, yeah. is going through pain, and this person is enjoying the act, enjoying the pain, and so they become saddest. And saddest are people who can they find pleasure in the pain of yeah, people, okay. inflicting pain, pain on yeah. people, and then getting it. Sometimes, some also thing they cannot do with you know their naked eye or themselves, so they have to go in for some drugs going to you know into alcohol and so then it begins to lead you into another path yeah. where you have to add drugs and medications you know to this uh, the women the women are also exposed to the infections because they are they also lick each other they found each other they insert almost anything steaks you know candles uh, banana a whole lot of things introduce carrots in carrots they introduce infections and you know, in their ecstasy, they might penetrate sticks, and it will go deep and may affect the cervix, may even affect the womb. The womb. Okay. I've I've seen girls who have stuck a lot of things under and have become infected to the point that we even have to, uh, you know, remove the womb because it had become infected uh, over time. And so they also expose themselves to all kinds of uh, infections and. 
bruises and injuries and if you if you keep infecting yourself if you have these sexual transmitted infections it can block your tubes okay and so then you know now that you want to give birth, give birth let's say yeah. now you are in a good relationship then issues of infertility comes in yeah. you cannot deliver because of all the infections that you've, you've been exposed to over over the years that's a choice. I, I, I thank God we are all Christians. I'm, I'm sure we've been preaching compelling messages. Still, it is, it is ongoing. What should Christians do? Um, Christians, we have something, you know, how to say, a behavior that is positively reinforced is more likely to be repeated. Now, as the society in general, if you condone the activity that, oh, it's human rights, mm -hmm. you know, they have their rights, mm -hmm. they have their rights, you are not going to feel sad or worried about the implications, even on their health. But as we, you know, comment against them, you know, they know that it's not good, it can help. Okay, sexual conduct is also influenced by uh, cultural factors, especially religious uh, uh, convictions. So, if a child is trained to know, to believe that homosexuality is immoral, the child is more likely to get into it. Doc, mm. what should Christians do, especially parents? Even if you think that is how you've been made, know that the Holy Spirit can help modify mm. um, what your natural inclinations are. And I think that's what he does for all of us yeah. at, at salvation. Because we all we all have natural tendencies, but when he comes, he gives us a new uh, perspective, and he gives us a power to live to live in that. The second thing I also want to say is that we must know. We know perhaps certain churches may allow it, but in the Bible, and I remember First uh, Corinthians six nine, that talks about the wrongdoers not inheriting the kingdom, the kingdom of God. God. Yeah. Specifically, he mentioned, mentioned men yeah. having sex with men. Yeah. And it's also in the other way for females having you know inordinate desire for females. So I think it is you cannot compromise it. It is clear that it is against God. And Revelation said people, uh, John said he saw them outside the, the the walls of the of the gate. Even if you think it is in your genes, the Holy Spirit can help you reverse it. Mm -hmm. The program is Channel of Hope. Auntie Joyce and Doctor Chairman saying God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you for watching Channel of Hope. Please let us pray. Father, I come before the throne of grace with fear and trembling. I acknowledge my sins. Please take me out of this darkness and usher me into your wonderful light. According to your word, neither the sexually immoral, nor the adulterer, nor the male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders will inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus, I know you are the purifier and the refiner, so please cleanse me and create me anew. From today, I make a declaration that no evil decrees signed to destroy my life, destiny, education, and business shall work. God, if you didn't ignore the cry of the blind Bartimaeus, then do not ignore me. Show forth your mercy. Keep me safe as I give myself to you. Banish every fear and negative influences which may cause me to go back. Kindly open my eyes to the wonderful mystery of your love. Amen. The Presbyterian Church of Ghana was established in 1828 by the Basel Mission Society. In 1926, the church was renamed Presbyterian Church of Gold Coast. And in 1957, when Ghana gained independence, the church became the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. The church upholds the centrality of the Word of God Godly leadership, democratic principles, and discipline, and end quality education. Currently, the church can boast of 17 presbyteries and still counting, as part of the church's mandate to ensure consistent spiritual renewal in the country that presents Channel of Hope. Channel of Hope is educating, <laughs> informative, it is a long way, but Jesus will come to you and entertaining. Channel of Hope, showing this and every Sunday from 5.30 to 6 p.m. on GTV.
Channel of Hope. Life's getting better.